My name is Therese Turner and I work at the Royal Botanic Gardens Victoria Melbourne Gardens. My role is horticulture team leader for Team North and I have up to 11 people in the team and there are 10 collections that those staff curate. My name is Gemma Cotterell, I'm a horticulturalist at the Royal Botanic Gardens Victoria Melbourne Gardens. Part of my role here as well as contributing to the site-wide horticultural maintenance and operations is curating the Australian Forest Walk. It's important for botanic gardens to collect plants from the wild because by doing so we bring botanical integrity into our living collections because we've got a known species from a distinct location or habitat which then opens that plant in the living collection up to education and research because we have good baseline data of where that plant has come from. So that's one aspect. Another aspect is horticulturally we can select plant material while we're in the wild to use as our advantage in the gardens. For example, we may want to deliberately select plants that are growing in hotter, drier positions in the wild with the view that that could then put them in an advantageous situation here in Melbourne Gardens to perform better in a challenging future climate. Before we even go out in the field collecting, the very first thing and the very most important thing is to ensure we have the proper permissions. Even as a botanic garden, we really need to have proper permitting in place before we're collecting plants in the wild. Through this permitting uh, process, that will also be about native title consultation and working with traditional owners. That's part of the permitting process. So once we've got our permit, then we're able to collect. Once we're in the field, there's a number of steps involved in making a plant collection. First, identifying the plant is key, making sure we're not gonna be accidentally introducing any weed species to the gardens. So once we've identified the plant, we can start making the collection. Part of that is taking the herbarium voucher specimen. So you want something that has flowers, fruit, any other identifying features that we can then press to mount later and store in the herbarium. We're also recording lots of data at this point. So the coordinates of where we are, locality information, associated plants, and of course the name of the plant. So all of that's going in our collecting book. It's assigned a collecting number, which we can then always link to the herbarium specimen, and then ultimately link it to the living plant in our living collection down the track. One of the, the key drivers at the moment in uh, the Royal Botanic Gardens Victoria is landscape succession. And there are some key strategic targets in there that we hope that we can fulfil. And those include having a very high percentage, actually up to 75% of our collection to be climate suited to the projected climate in 2090. We hope to have this by 2036. So we need to collect yearly to bring up our percentages so we can reach this strategic target. The conservation of plants can also be made by ex situ collections. So plants collected from the wild can be housed or grown in a botanic garden that may not only save the extinction of that species from the threat of climate or fire or drought or floods. It also provides a potential resource for propagation and growth you know, in horticulture or for further science um, objectives. With knowing where plants come from in the wild, we get a really whole picture of the rainfall, the aspect, the exposure, the temperature, and all this information becomes really important. So we can transition the landscape into one that will be here for the next hundred years, for future generations. At the same time, botanic gardens have the capacity to test and try these plants out out of their natural range. And we can find out if these plants have this plasticity or this ability to tolerate hotter and drier conditions. One of the challenges of plant collecting is climate change and how that's affecting the natural environment and our ability to plan trips. Last year we saw a really serious drought and followed by a really bad bushfire season and that made it really difficult for us to know when we'd be able to go out into the environment and start collecting. 
So it just threw so many challenges our way, which is interesting because we're trying to build the resilience of our garden against climate change and it's really one of our biggest challenges in doing that. In February 2020, uh, I was fortunate to go on a collecting trip to New South Wales. So working with our colleagues in New South Wales, we developed some climate parameters for us to look for locations to collect from to build upon our targets in the landscape succession strategy to make our gardens more resilient to Melbourne's future climate. Eventually we were able to get something together because the seed bank officer at Plant Bank, Gavin Phillips, really wanted to get out and do a trip to do threatened species assessments of a number of sites that he was aware of, particularly ones that were bushfire affected. And a lot of those locations actually matched up to areas we had identified as being climate suitable. So it became this great collaboration where Gavin and I were able to go on this collecting trip together, working for you know, different organisations with different goals, but also common goals and being able to help each other along the way. In April 2019, uh, Gemma and I were very fortunate to be part of a collecting trip to far north Queensland. And we went to a mountain, Mount Lewis, and this mountain has um, extraordinary uh, cloud top uh, forest. And we went there to support uh, the collecting of species that are at risk of extinction through climate change because they're growing at the very top of the mountain. For modern day uh, plant collecting trips, I think a couple of the, the two distinctions that I can think of um, that would be quite different to the collecting that Guilfoyle and Mueller would have done is the connection that we're beginning to make and hopefully will continue to foster is between our work and the uh, lives of the traditional owners of the land that we're collecting on. The other aspect which I find quite interesting is that we're very, very fortunate to have the technology, um, we've got satellite phones, um, we have vehicles and we also have a lot of um, immense amount of planning and preparation and enormous relationship building that goes on beforehand. Another challenge for us as a botanic garden to collect plants in the wild for the living plant collection is not just the, the funding aspect but also the, the skill set that we need and to build those skills and also to build those relationships that help that skill building. So that takes quite a lot of time uh, to get the connections happening really strong so that we can all support each other on what is essentially a shared goal to increase our uh, wild and climate matched uh, plant material. So many highlights. One that really stays with me is being able to collect uh, macadamia tetraphylla from the wild. It's a really special experience because everyone knows macadamia, very commonly eaten and farmed across the world, but it's actually rare and threatened in its natural environment. So it was really a really special experience to not only see it growing, but be able to make a collection of that plant. and. I'll just I'll always remember that. It's a beautiful location and a really special experience to be able to see that plant in the wild.